Welcome to the Royal William Yard in Plymouth, where behind me is Princess's brand new flagship model. This is the Y95. Now, you might well have seen our video of its sister ship, the X95. Now, this uses exactly the same hull, but has a very different layout. You, you may remember that the X95 actually has an enclosed top deck, so it's a full tri-deck model, whereas this is a raised pilot house with an open flybridge but you can see it's a very pretty looking thing. It was a little bit controversial, the X95. Some people weren't that keen on the, the, the height of that extra tri-deck and that quite aggressive forward-facing windscreen. So this is, if you like, a slightly more traditional looking princess, but it uses exactly the same hull. You can see down here, it has got that little wave piercing bow on it. Now that's a really important addition in terms of fuel efficiency. That gives it a really good running efficiency at the displacement speed of kind of 10 to 12 knots that gives an impressive range. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but just admire the view down these top sides. You can see that window down there, that is the longest hull window ever fitted to a princess. But you've also got this extra window line up here, and that's because you can see Behind there, there is a full main deck master cabin, and we'll have a complete look at the whole boat from top to bottom, show you absolutely everything there is to see. Now, let's talk prices for a moment. This is a big old boat, it's 95 foot long. Uh, it just sneaks under the 24 meter load lie length rule, so you don't need to have a full commercial ticket. It is technically possible to helm this yourself, although realistically you're definitely going to need crew. But the price for this is around 12 and a half million pounds, including VAT and some of the many, many options that this boat offers. So let's get started and have a little look. Now I just wanted to show you how this Opac Mari transformer works because it's a really clever piece of kit. So at the moment we've got it set at the halfway height, but you can see that if you lower it down into the water, that that will actually sink all the way down underneath the water, not only so that you can launch the tender, and by the way, this will carry a really big tender. It's got a thousand kilogram weight on it, so you can get a Williams diesel jet 505, but it also becomes a lovely underwater bathing platform. So you can see these steps here, effectively, they create a stairway down into the water for your own private beach on the water. So you get an idea of how it works going down and then equally, if you bring it up, that whole thing comes up. You can use that as a step up onto the key. If you're moored stern two in the med, you can create a really nice step up. Although there is in fact a five meter passerelle, a standard two, but you can see that's a much bigger, easier, safer way to get ashore. But also when you're in running mode, that will swing the whole way over. We won't go the whole way over, but you can see that that whole thing will then tuck into this area of the bathing platform. So that drops down, this swings all the way over and clamps shut so it is completely flush. Really, really clever bit of kit. So what else is going on at the stern? A whole load of things. Now this is the beach club option. You don't have to have this. This can all be a crew area with a garage for a jet ski in there. So if that's fitted out just as a garage, there is a, a trolley for the jet ski and that will roll off the back. The tender itself obviously sits on this platform here and you can get up to a diesel jet 505 on that, but equally you can stow it up on the flybridge and we'll show you that too. But the beach club option is obviously a really lovely thing to have for guests. Now this is actually what they call the hybrid beach club option. So it's slightly smaller than the full beach club We'll show you what the full beach club looks like with one of the renderings, but this is a hybrid one because you get a slightly smaller beach club area, but you get an extra crew cabin. So let's go and have a little look at the crew area now. So the beach club on this side, we've got a serving bar. You can see there is a TV built into the bulkhead there. We've also got speakers, so the full name audio system. You can see the speakers are set into this garage, the sort of clamshell lid, if you like. And there's also a doorway there. So when it's closed, you can still come and go. 
The crew can use this as a mess area, and you can see there are little windows in the transom there, so you also get natural light coming through. So even when this is closed up, it's still a usable area. We've got a fridge behind there. We've also got a microwave built in there, a microwave oven, and then this small seating area here, which obviously for guests during the daytime, that's a lovely spot to sit and have a drink or so on. The crew can also use that as their mess. And then if you come through into the crew area itself, now if you have the full beach club, it extends all the way to here, but you can see that they've foreshortened it a little bit on this one in order to get an extra crew cabin. So I'll show you how that works. So this is the extra crew cabin. You can see it's a decent size bunk cabin for two crew there. But equally, there's a lot of other crew space. So if you don't have that, there's still plenty of room. This is the captain's cabin. It's a full ensuite double cabin. You can see there's a really good size double bed there and a proper ensuite bathroom right here. So captain is very well looked after. He's got, or she indeed, has storage here too. And you can, in fact, have an extra little Pullman berth that comes down on top of that if you really need extra crew, but I think that's unlikely on this boat because you can see there's plenty of cabins anyway. Now this is the main crew heads compartment and obviously guests can use this too during the day. If you're using this as a beach club then it's rather nice to be able to have a, a, a day heads right next to it here. We've already seen that twin crew cabin and then there is another bunk cabin here. So a total of six beds, crew berths on board this boat. We've also got storage for the washing machine and dryer, two separate ones. And then there's also access up onto the side deck from here. So you can see the crew have access from the side deck or from that beach club area. And then let's go through into the engine room. They have access directly in here. And look at this, this is a really fabulously well organized engine room. This has got the twin man V12, 2000 horsepower engines. They're on straight shafts. You can just see the shafts running down there. Really well lit, plenty of headroom. You can see above me here, there's plenty of headroom. And we've got the raw water strainers here. We've got all the AC distribution network in these cabinets here. We've got fuel level gauges here. There is a full water maker system here, so that'll make fresh water from seawater or indeed purify the water that you've taken on board whilst you're in port. We've got the full hydraulics for the Sleipner stabilizers and thrusters. This boat has got a bow thruster and a stern thruster and the Sleipner curved fin stabilizers that work both underway and at anchor. We've got a full fuel polishing system here and then twin Cummins generators. I think the standard is 40 kilowatt, but these have got the optional 50 kilowatt power output. You can see the other one here. So really well sorted. Now these 2000 horsepower engines will give a top speed of about 24 knots. And it has a total of 13,800 liters of fuel on board and that will give it a range of around about 1500 nautical miles at 10 to 12 knots. So let's start moving up through the decks. We can see there's access either side, We've got steps up into the cockpit and look at the calibre of some of these fittings, that huge oval stainless steel grab rail. Everything about this boat feels super yacht substantial. Really good mooring gear here. You can see these massive fair leads with nice smooth surfaces, twin cleats, and then the Lumar winches pull you in. And these run all the way along the side decks. Now you can see that this side deck stops short up here, it just gives access for the crew into the galley. And then you've got a side boarding gate here. Whereas if we go round to this side, you can see that that side deck runs up and there are steps up to the foredeck area. 
but we're going to go this way. But let's have a little look at this cockpit area first of all. Now there's lots of different options that you can have here. This has got the kind of occasional table and chairs. You can have this as a full dining space. If you go for that, then you get a similar shaped sofa and you have two separate teak tables with a lift out panel in the middle so they can all be joined together to make one big dining area. Or you can have it as two sort of smaller coffee tables so that people can come and go through the gap between them. This area here, this is called the sort of extended wet bar. You can have a shorter one that cuts short here, or you can have a full walk-in bar. If that's the case, then you have the bar coming out here and a little wrap around so somebody can get in behind the bar to serve from there. Now this is equipped with a sink. Under here, we've got storage. And in here, we have a drinks fridge. It's a pull-out drawer style drinks fridge. So this is the kind of halfway house, but you can have a proper bar area there. And that of course then gives access into the saloon, but we'll do the interior in a minute. Let's, for the moment, let's go up to the flybridge because this is where one of the big differences is between this and the X95. Now the X95 has a proper enclosed sky saloon up here, whereas this is the more traditional open flybridge. I say open, it feels really well protected under here. You can see we've got a huge hard top overhead. And in fact, there are various different options up here. You can either have uh, these uh, louvre style slats that tilt up, I'll show you that in a minute, but you can also just have that as a fixed hard top or indeed a glazed hard top. So if we press this button here, you can see that these louvers overhead open up and let the sun stream through. But equally, if the rain comes in and you want a bit more cover or shelter or it gets too hot, you just close them up that way. Really neat. And this runs all the way back here and you can see this section here is actually an extending sort of canopy style shade. So that all slides back into this hard top overhang up here. And then you've got multiple choices as to how you configure the flybridge itself. This has got the freestanding furniture on, uh, but you can have a, a full spa bath here with sun loungers behind it. Got this lovely glass transom. I really like the way they do, do that. If you're just sitting here at one of the sofas, you get such a great view out over the wash of the boat from there. Over on this side, you can see there is a very fancy carbon fiber shower. You can see that that's all in position. And over on this side is another secret. This boat has actually got the optional crane fitted. Now you can see that just tucks very neatly under that flybridge combing there, but that will also give you a thousand kilogram capacity. So that very same Williams diesel jet that we talked about sitting on board that transformer platform can also be lifted up here. Um, but I think in this case, the, the idea is they're going to have the tender down there and then a jet ski up here because with that beach club option, you clearly haven't got a, a garage to store the jet ski down there. But <clears throat> lots of lots of different options up here. Now, moving forward, same thing applies. This has got the, it's not quite a freestanding table, but you can see that it's not built in. You've got freestanding chairs all the way around it. But equally, you can have built in furniture on this side with a similar size table that just slots into a kind of U-shaped sofa. Over here, we've got this magnificent bar area. I really love this. Now, look at that. That is a fully waterproof TV. So you can watch, your, watch a movie up here or Formula One or whatever it is you're into. That obviously drops down into there and can swing one way or the other so you can get a really nice view. But look at the fluid shapes of this bar area. So nicely done. They're just really good at doing very subtle, not too showy, but lots of lovely shapes. A couple of bar stools there. Just imagine yourself propping up that bar with a cocktail or two. And a really well-equipped bar. Look at this. We've got big old fridge drawer there. We've got an ice maker under here. We've got loads of storage. 
And check this out. Look at that, a double grill. Now that is really quite fancy. But then again, if you think about it, you can get 10 or 12 guests on board here easily. So if you are gonna be cooking lobsters or steak on the barbecue, you're gonna need space to cook for 10 or 12 people. It makes perfect sense. Little sink here, lots more storage under here. I won't show you them all, but there's plenty of storage everywhere you look. And this is a lovely spot too. You see there's just a couple of steps up here to this little curved seating area, which just gives you a little bit of elevation for a view out over that bow. Really lovely spot. Oh yes, yeah, so I could definitely get used to this. And then an outside helm station. We've got two chairs here. They are on runners so you can adjust them, adjust the reach. And this is a rather neat trick. It looks a little bit over simple, this particular helm station. Looks like, well, hang on, where's all the instrumentation? Obviously, we've got the throttles, got the start buttons and the thrusters, but if we just press this button here, up comes a full set of navigation equipment. How cool is that? So that will keep on going all the way up. It takes a little bit of time to lock into place. But there you go. You've got full screen, you've got the radar, you've got navigation, you've got access to all the boat systems. I'll show you some of those in the main bridge in a minute. But rather neat that that all just tucks away when it's not in use. And then you can see there's a big swing out gate on this side but just before we do that I'm just going to show you one other thing because on either side you can see there's a little locker in there with a very discreet little button and then another one over on this side even bigger looking locker same little discreet button and a couple of built-in steps and that is because either side of here is a special dedicated locker for life rafts and when you press that button that little bit of the combing falls away, the lifeboat, can, the lifeboat, the sorry, life raft can then be launched and you're away. So you've got one either side, exactly the same, exactly where they should be so that you can launch them. It's the easy, straight off the boat. They're right, nice and high up, exactly where you need them. So if it ever does come to it, very cleverly done. And then access through this pantograph gate to the foredeck area. And again, this is quite different to the X95. I think the X95 had a more of a kind of seating area here. On the Y95, you get these lovely big sun pads. And look at this beautiful teak deck between them. Now, very elegantly done sun pads. You can see an elevated headrest. They don't do anything fancy. They haven't got any sort of electric folding bits or props, but Actually, there's a little bit of a slope on them anyway, and with that headrest, gives you just enough elevation. And of course, you've got your drinks holders in here. Got lovely, those thick oval grab rails either side. And then check this out. So this is both a technical area and a guest space. Lovely little U-shaped seat here. And look in here, you've got a little refrigerated drinks compartment right between you both. So even up here, right on the forepeak, you have your own little drinks area. I, I can't tell you how many fridges there are on board this boat. I lost count when I got to about a dozen, but you also got the speakers built in. And look at this technical area too. Really well done. Beautiful stainless steel plates. We've got twin anchors on board. Again, twin cleats. But look at this, this is what I like. Here is a perfect little wash space. So these taps here, they are for the freshwater wash for the anchor chain. So if you turn that on, that will automatically rinse the chain as it comes up into the chain lockers. And of course, when you're mooring in the med and you've got those, what you call, we call them slime lines, because when you pick them up to pick up the bow lines that will hold you in place, you inevitably get filthy hands and that will just enable you to wash your hands once you've done them and keep all the dirt up here. What a great idea that is. And if we look in here, see the actual 
chain lockers. It's quite stiff. There we go. Lift that up. And look at the size of this chain locker. I mean, it just goes down miles. I mean, that's got to be 10 foot high. And then these two huge separate chain lockers. And you can see how clean that chain looks. It all gets rinsed off as it comes through the horse pipe. So it's nice and clean by the time it gets in here. But you could chuck all manner of things down there. Certainly you could have more fenders than you'd ever possibly need. And a brilliant little hide and seek spot for the kids. You're never gonna find them there. So let's close that up. And then if you thought that, that was deep, check out this one. Just twist that round, there we go. Look, and there is another big locker. So got a couple of the fenders in here, plenty of space for covers and so on. But what a well sorted technical area that is. Absolutely brilliant. Now, moving back from the foredeck area, we'll take you back down to show, so you can see that we came down that port side deck, which is on the same level as the flybridge that runs down to this foredeck area, and then you move all the way around here and come back down this starboard side deck. And this is where the stairs drop back down to main deck level. And you can see there is an access door in here. I'll show you that from the inside in a minute. And here we have the optional uh, saloon doors. So these give access straight through into the saloon and dining area. Again, I'll show you that from the inside, but you can see there are little buttons to open it from this side too. And this comes all the way back into the cockpit. You can see there is another side access gate here. And of course, on this side, there is also the stern helm station. So that folds out when you're coming in stern two. Again, the, the captain can control the boat from here, have a perfect view over the back to make sure you see exactly how close to the key they are. And you've got the throttles, you've got anchors, and you've got the bow and stern thrusters. So really handy that, but also tucks completely out of the way when you don't need it. So, a couple more bits and pieces, just lots of storage space here in the cockpit. This is the safety cupboard, so you can see that you can got the engine room bilge here, we've got the shut-off valves for the fuel, we've got the manual bilge pump. So, all conveniently located, and again, you can put life jackets and likes in there, but really handy storage space for that. Okay. Now, this is the hatch down into the engine room. If you want to go direct from here, you can see there is a hatch space there, but we're gonna go into the main saloon. So you can see those, there's a three part door there that will go one further section over, but I'm just gonna close it up for the moment, keep us nice and warm. And here is the saloon. And what a gorgeous space this is. This is what princess just do so well. They don't overblow it with too many flash details or over the top decor. It's just really discreet, really calming. Obviously you've got a massive choice of options and colors and woods. Uh, this is the walnut wood, but you can also have several different kinds of oak. There's the Alba oak, there's the Revere oak and there is a silver oak. So lots of different options for what color you want, how dark you want the wood to be. And then this area here, the main seating section, again, there's lots of different options here. This is the kind of standard most popular one, but what you can have is an L-shaped sofa here with a side return bit here so that you've got a view out into the cockpit. You've also got a number of different options. You can have a big sideboard on this side if you need more storage. You can see there is also a huge TV in there. I think that's a 65 inch TV that lifts out of there. So lots of different options. And the same holds true further forward. All at the moment open plan to this dining space here. This is the, the standard kind of oval table. You can get lots of different 
finishes. This has got a quartz finish on it, and of course, lots of different chair options. But you can choose to have a bar area in the corner over here and a round extending table that sits here. So lots of different variations, but look how lovely this satin walnut looks on the floor. Really lovely. Now these are the optional side doors that I talked about from the side deck. Now these work, they have a little electronic release. So you press that button. You can just see those doors starting to motor out a little bit. That's because they have to be absolutely watertight in order to pass the various regulations. So the electric bit just swings them out and then they open manually. But really lovely to have that fresh air, that flow of breeze coming through the boat. Not so much perhaps on a December day that we're in now, but in the Mediterranean, you can see that would be absolutely perfect. And then of course, press the button again and they will close up. But what a lovely saloon. So let's make our way round to the port side. Those doors are closed now. Now I wanted to show you this little side unit because Looks again, very neat, very discreet, but look how lovely the detailing is in here. If you open, I'm just gonna to have to move that chair a little bit actually, but just move that over there and look in here. Beautiful storage for all the glasses. You've got your whiskey tumblers, your long drinks. I won't do them all, but you get the, the idea. They're all beautifully stored. There's a little perspex holder to keep them all in place. And that's what I mean by princesses, subtle touches, but when they want to do the detailing, they do it really, really well, but it's just very discreet. You've also got a little ice maker in there. You can just about see it under there. And I believe there is another wine fridge in there. So. I mentioned there are a lot of fridges on this boat, and I'm not kidding. Now, this comes through into the galley. Look at this little detail here too. It's just lovely kind of louvered and this beautiful curved corner here. Just little things. Now you can see there are buttons on the floor here. That's because this is, the crew can just tap their foot on that and open and close the door. So if they've got their hands full bringing dinner through, they can do it all with their feet. This is the galley space itself, so there's that side door out onto the side deck. So if crew want to come and go and that's closed, they can very discreetly just move along that side deck. Lots of space inside the galley itself. So this is a rather neat unit. Check this out. Look at that. So that is the cupboard probably used to store the coffee maker. But isn't that neat the way that that just slides out the way? Uh, all these drawers hold all the cutlery. I won't do them all, but you get the idea. All beautifully stored exactly where you want it to be. So between the galley and the dining area, masses of cold storage space. We've got huge sub-zero fridges, twins, twin, twin sub-zero fridges here, and then four big freezer drawers underneath. Let's have a look at one of them, but you get the idea, masses of space. We've got a proper wine cooler in there, lots of preparation space here, bin in there, dishwasher, one and a half sink, huge cooking area. There's a double width Miele oven in there. Another small one here, big induction hob on top. And even here, Look at that, that's quite neat, isn't it? So as you open the door, those drawers just swing out of their own so you can get access to everything that's tucked right at the back of the cupboard. Well, there's also a little secret space in here, if I can find, there you go. So that is a technical space with all the access to all the wiring, but again, just really handy for additional storage in the galley there. 
And another great hiding place for the kids. I'm telling you, if you've got grandchildren on board this boat, you'll be looking for them half the time. Lots of little storage for spices and bits and bobs in there. And another swing out cupboard there. Now, if we come through into this kind of lobby space, you can see this is where we've come from. We're back in the dining space here, so we've just done a little loop, but there is some curved steps up to the bridge, which we'll have a look at in a minute. There are steps down to the guest accommodation, but if we come forward, you can see on the starboard side, there is a rather handy day heads. Just have a little peek in there. Again, just really useful when you've got a lot of guests on board to have a day heads that means people can come and go without having to go down to the lower deck. And then one more little secret space. Check that out, an absolutely enormous little storage space in there that you can crawl into. Now there's that other side door out onto the side deck. So again, really handy, just such good flow around the boat. You don't have to make your way forward or back. There's always access. And then coming forward from here, this is the main deck master suite. And this more than lives up to its billing. What a terrific cabin this is. And look how bright it feels. I mean, we've got these huge windows on either side, but also this lovely sort of pale cream carpet. We've got the pale bed, the lovely kind of fabric bed heads and bulkhead coverings and little subtle light units. Obviously, when you buy about over 75 feet, you have an enormous choice of options and you are in fact given your own kind of specialist interior stylists who will work with you to give you exactly the finish you like. But these kind of recessed overhead lighting panels just give a lovely vibe in here. It's so kind of calming. It's also lovely and warm. Now there are lots of different options here. This is obviously a kind of curved sofa, but you can have a, a desk unit here. If you want to work on board, you can have that fitted out as a desk or you can have a little uh, kind of breakfast table area with a couple of small uh, sort of chairs or little mini sofas with a table in between them so you can sit and have your breakfast there. There's masses of stowage either side. I won't show you them all but you can see there's a hanging cupboard there. There's another hanging cupboard here. There's little drawers in the bed heads and I think under here by the looks of things so masses of storage, vast TV built into that forward bulkhead. Now this is quite a different layout. On the X95, you have got the option of either a country kitchen in this area or, this, uh, or, or a, a, a full window out onto the foredeck. So quite a different layout, but both equally impressive. And on this side, you have the ensuite bathroom twin sinks, separate toilet cubicle, and behind here, the shower cubicle. Overhead shower in there, blinds obviously everywhere, little opening hatch. And you can see nice little magnetic latches that hold everything in place. And over on the port side, the full walk-in wardrobe Got hanging space along here, got drawers on either side. Not the largest walk-in wardrobe because most of that space is the bathroom, but when you consider that that's in addition to those two hanging cupboards over by the entrance lobby, there's more than enough. There's a vanity unit built into this side table for your makeup and valuables. Lots of drawers here and those huge, huge windows. Really lovely cabin. Now then, moving back, let's take a quick diversion up to the bridge. So this is the main helm station. We've got the boss's chair. So it's just a single captain's chair, absolute kind of command and control position with this fabulous layout 
of all the screens. So we've got Raymarine screens on this one. You can see you've got one, two, three Raymarine screens and two Bonning screens. Now the Bonning system is really handy. So this gives access to all the ship systems. So we're on AC at the moment, but if you press that, we can have a look at the freshwater tanks, see exactly how much fresh water you've got on board, which pumps are running. You go back, you can have a look at DC power, you can access the fuel tanks, absolutely everything, any information you need. Now, the other nice thing is you've obviously got cameras, you've got cameras down in the engine room, so you can see exactly what you want. And there is also a lighting feature. So this one here is rather brilliant. You can have all these preset lighting programs. So you can have all off, you can have optimum, which is just a sort of standard setup for night. You can have uh, harbour, boarding, evening. So you can just scroll through those and that will automatically change the light setting to whatever it is that you particularly want to use or you regularly use. Bow and stern thrusters, those Sleipner thrusters that we talked about. Got the throttles for the two man engines. And the flare, that tends to be a, a nighttime vision camera so you can get better vision at night. And then a really lovely little seating area over to this side so the crew can be here or guests can come and have a chat to the captain. You can see there's a little sliding table that moves along a track down there. There's lots of storage behind here for ships, manuals and so on. And then behind here is the main audio system. So those are the, the name controls for the built-in audio throughout the boat. And then AC and DC system controls by this little stairwell up to the flybridge. So again, that's just a perspex door that slides across all the air conditioning controls, domestic air conditioning. So really good hands-on access to absolutely everything. And actually very good vision through here too. Even though they're quite steeply raked, you do get a good view down that foredeck. Right, let's drop down into the main guest accommodation. And you can see we've got these nicely underlit stairs. And let's start by going forward. So there are effectively kind of three big VIP cabins. We've already seen the main deck. This is the forward guest VIP. And look at the amount of floor space in here. Really big lobby area. And actually what they've done is rather than having eye level storage around the bed, they put this rather nice angled storage here. So behind each of these, there's good storage, but that just makes it feel more open up top. So rather than feeling you're a little bit hemmed in by cupboards and so on, they've put them all at a lower level and that just maximizes the feeling of space around here. Got a big TV built into the bulkhead here, masses of headroom. Again, look at that headroom above me there. There's a good six, eight inches above me and I'm six foot one. There's a little vanity unit over here again with that much the same style. And then in here, another really big walk-in wardrobe. It's almost bigger than the master suites. But again, lovely backlit shelves, lots of spaces for socks and shoes, and then a big hanging rail overhead. More drawers under the bed. And then on the suite bathroom over in this corner, Again, with its own window and opening hatch. And I love the way these basins are actually built into the surface. You can see it's not a separate unit. It's molded in to the surface there. Oh, and also a lovely heated floor. I can't tell you how warm that feels underfoot. Loo in the corner, big walk-in shower. Very, very lovely. And now moving back through the boat, we've got twin cabins on both sides. Now these are pretty much mirror cabins of each other. So you can see there are two twin beds. They are in fact on a sliding control panel. You can see there's a panel here. Uh, not quite sure if they're 
There you go, it's just starting to move across. I won't go all the way because there is something in between them. In fact, that's probably why it stopped, but you can see that that inboard bed slides across to the outboard one and that can be made up into a double. Again, two opening hatches in there, TV behind the door, hanging cupboard behind it, and again, ensuite bathroom. Look, just lots of clever little storage spaces everywhere you look. Now, exactly the same on the other side over here. Again, twin beds. One of the options you can have if you don't want these sliding beds, you can have a fold down Pullman in both of these. So again, you can sleep three in these cabins if you want to. Again, speakers up in the deck head. Another hanging wardrobe in there. Again, TV behind the door and a big ensuite bathroom. And then moving further back still, just pause briefly, you can see there is space for a washer dryer in there. It has been vented, but it's just been left to storage in this boat. And this is really the second or the third VIP, however you look at it, but another absolutely enormous cabin. So really lovely, big, quite low level bed, huge TV in the bulkhead, vanity area here, more storage in the sideboard. And then over on the other side, again, this is one of those spaces that you have loads of different options for. This is the, the, the standard layout with a sofa and a little coffee table. But again, you can have a desk here or you can have a breakfast bar. Lovely big windows on both sides. You can imagine how lovely that's going to be in a Mediterranean and view out over the water. Big walk-in wardrobe on this side. And over on the other side, the ensuite bathroom. And much like that main deck one, we've got twin sinks molded into the surface. Lovely heated quartz floor, big separate toilet compartment, and the shower on this side. Again, absolutely enormous. You've got the rain shower overhead. You've got the separate shower mounting on the side. And of course that opening porthole, really, really lovely. Again, look at the lovely curves in that walnut veneer. Now you can have satin or you can have high gloss, but this I think is the most popular option. Right, I think we are pretty much there. Let's make our way back up the stairs into that main saloon where we will finish up the tour. Sitting on one of these fabulous sofas, that is the brand new Princess Y95 all 12 and a half million pounds worth, including VAT. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous boat, but let me know in the comments what you think about it, what you think of the boat, what you think of the presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to be reminded every time we post a new video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.